Hey everybody, here we are. We are in the South Wildflower Garden, which is one of the first ones that we did when we were here. We had a new well put in, and then we planted all these out here. And I just want to give you an update. We did a tour out here a couple years ago, and I want you to see how different the plants are. Age of plants is really impressive. The longer they're here, the bigger their root systems get, and the more magnificent the above ground parts get. I've talked about a lot of these plants before. Bergamot, purple coneflower, cup plant. We have definitely a fritillary flying around. This one is New England Aster, not yet flowering, but it has clasping leaves. That's a really good plant to have, a super important late season nectar plant. We do minimal pruning on this path at this time of year because it's so awesome and we don't mind touching the plants a little bit. So I'm just going to take you down this path and take you into the heart of this bed so you can see. I would say this planting is mm, maybe eight years old or so and it's changed a ton. And that is the one thing we have learned the most, is the plants move to where they want to go. And so by letting them do that and not controlling them, we've had the most fun. These hoses and whatnot are for our cistern and allow us to water some different areas. Look at this. Right in the middle is the green-headed comb flower. That's a really tall one. They're not yet flowered. The false sunflower, which is right here, Heliopsis helianthoides, is amazing. It has so spread. Stephen, I thought it was fading out. And nope, instead it's just spread on down like a whole wave of golden yellow. This area so right now when I'm looking at the house, I'm facing north. So it gets a lot of eastern sun, but you can see, so the morning sun, the, the neighbors have a, a woods. And so it gets some strong sun for a while. And then you get the shading from walnut and maples. And I think it's just really done great. So the prairie plants are doing wonderful, but that's also why some of these other plants that don't like as intense a shade, which might be false sunflower and definitely bottle brush, why they've spread. And yet the prairie plants hang on, so it's a really cool mix. I see silver spotted skippers, hummingbird clear wings, tons of bees. We'll keep going here. I've taken you this way before, so you can just see right here on this southwest corner is these big, thick shrubs, spice bush loaded with fruits. We love the intermixing of habitats, the different types. It has just increased diversity exponentially. And that makes this little three and a half acres mighty powerful. We'll go up here to our little hangout area. Whoa, the raccoons come up here. <laughs> I almost stepped in a big pile of raccoon poop. <laughs> we like to watch them. The I was sitting in that chair up there and a raccoon about crawled in my lap. Oh my goodness, I let him know I was there and then he wandered away. So you can see this jewel weed looks a little sad at the moment. The jewel weed self sewed into this pot and it's a little hot up here for the jewel weed. We have our outside plants. We have this dwarf pomegranate and 
the hummingbirds are pollinating this. So it is not a plant that can survive outside, but definitely comes inside in the winter. And I'm so excited to see if we actually get edible fruits. All right, here is that pokeweed we have talked about many times, getting bigger and better every year. And a lot of people say, oh, they're too big to have by your house, but it really depends what your goal is. If you wanna be immersed in wildlife and maybe you wanna have a little privacy, it's an awesome plant to have by your house. We looked at these early on because of all the aphids. Cut plants, the red aphids on cut plant video. And you can see they're mostly gone. Pretty interesting. So they were feasted on over and over and over by song sparrows, chickadees, goldfinches, catbirds. And the cut plants are a little bit smaller than years past. Whether it's due to aphids, you can see some discoloration on there, which the aphids did, or the moisture, we don't know. But it's just a system of checks and balances Cut plants can be really aggressive, which we embrace, but then also it's fascinating because then Mother Nature throws in aphids and they say, yeah, slow down a little bit. Here's our milkweed coming up. There have been several eggs laid on this one. The monarchs love it, but so far the caterpillars have not made it because they are eaten by ants or wasps. And we're not raising caterpillars. There's definitely some new protocol on that. So if you are a monarch raiser, you want to monarch caterpillar raiser, do some research on that and make sure they're getting exposed to wind and rain. That is critical to make sure that they migrate. More indoor plants. We're going to do just this little pocket garden out back, and that'll conclude this tour. So we love to sit here and have coffee, <laughs> chit-chat, watch all the birds. It smells so wonderful right in here because the purple comb flower. Oh, they smell great. Okay, look at the bottle brush grass. It's just great. This is our last piece we're going to look at. These are later. See the black eyed or the brown eyed Susans? They're not yet flowering. But we also have more spice bush here. And super exciting. Yesterday we had a giant swallowtail flying through here. And giant swallowtails feast on plants in the citrus family. And in this area, citrus family wise, we have hop tree. And then past the bottle brush, out here we have prickly ash. And so that's Rutaceae, citrus family. And so we're hoping she was a female and laid a lot of eggs. Here though is the very last piece of the South Garden. So we call this one the little pocket garden. When they did an add-on on this house sometime long ago, they took out part of the original foundation to expand it and add another section of basement. And that original foundation is out here in this wall. And the chipmunks love to live in there. And we have all sorts of interesting plants growing in here. This one, as you can see, is much, much, much more shady. So different mix of plants, but also some of the same. The beet grass loves this area. That's that real wispy one. When we had chickens, they sure loved to eat those seeds. Little birds love this bird bath because it's so shallow. And we have a couple deeper ones that the bigger birds love. So here we go, last look for you. Low hanging maple limb that adds such character to this area and all these blooming wildflowers. And in here, no, we don't do hardly anything anymore. We barely even chop down, chop down stalks. The only thing we don't let get going in here are trees, just because we want to have some light in this spot.